One of the biggest struggles I see with folks going through menopause and perimenopause is pain, and especially in the shoulders. It is common for ladies when the estrogen starts to drop to have some trouble with shoulders, and in particular, frozen shoulder. So if you're starting to notice that your shoulder's tweaking a little bit, it might feel like it's even curling in on you, and you're kind of like twisted, start to work on it because you don't want it to lock up on you. And you know how it usually does it? Something stupid. And in particular, when you're reaching back in the car to grab something and bring it forward to you. So grabbing that purse from the back seat can be dangerous. Now, what can you do about it? Stay tuned, I'm gonna show you. If you're struggling with shoulder pain, even if you're struggling with ankle pain, there are some things you can do to prevent this from causing big trouble. Especially before you work out, you wanna be thinking, what can I do to mobilize this area a little bit more? Let's say it's your shoulder. In fact, I've had some left shoulder issues as I've headed into perimenopause, so I wanna show you a couple things that I am doing on a regular basis. Stretching every day is a wise idea, no matter what you're about to do. Of course, before workouts, it's wise to get the joints moving. But if shoulders are your problem, check this out. So we've all kind of seen that like, put your arm on the wall and stretch, right? That's a good one and really leaning into it so you can feel it. You wanna make sure you get all three angles because this area is key too. And make sure you get the lower side of things as well. Do both sides, hold about 30 to 60 seconds on this. All right, get out a band. If you got a dowel, meaning like your broom, you could use it too. Get your hands like so in a band and the around the worlds here are incredible for opening up the shoulders, especially before a day where you're gonna sit on the computer or before a workout like I'm about to do here. But really doing two sets of 10 of these can get things going, you don't need a ton of time. Now I'm kind of going fast, you can do this a lot slower and get that stretch on the back end and coming back this way. Now after that, band pull aparts, squeezing your shoulder blades together are incredible for this as well. So getting in about two sets of 10 of these too, just to get a nice warm up. Then if you still feel like you have some tension in there, I'm gonna show you a trick. One of the things that I found to be the most helpful for helping with mobility and prepping me for a workout and for some post care as well too, is body tempering. And I have two tools here. This one's a 50 pound, this one weighs just a little under 20 pounds. And what I like to do with these guys is I like to lay down and set them on my shoulder and literally just have that weight kind of compressing the muscular area. It helps to really push out any inflammatory proteins, but also changes the message to your nerve to help your muscle relax. Now, a couple minutes of doing this, you can roll it all the way down your arm. A couple minutes of doing this can be amazing, and you'll feel your muscle literally relax, and it's glorious. Right now I have it on my bicep because sometimes shoulder pain can be a lot of bicep tension. So I'm just gonna let this guy hang out here and relax. So if you're looking for something that can help you to really get your muscles moving and stretching is not enough and the banded things that I showed earlier are not enough, try body tempering. I think it is an amazing tool to really get some of that deep muscular tissue just and so that we have more mobility and we don't head into having injuries and trouble because the more you can keep your joints mobile in perimenopause and menopause, the better off you're going to be. I'm Dr. Janine Kraus, thanks for watching. And if you're looking for more information, head over to my website at drjkrausnd.com or stay tuned to the YouTube channel where I'll be putting out more and more info on what to do to survive perimenopause and menopause.